Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. Uh, the best free supplement to your paid study materials is the YouTube channel and the uh, great investment for a paid supplement, if you don't already have a Kaplan Q Bank, is uh, the Kaplan Q Bank with my Guru 10 discount code at checkout. Works for all Kaplan products and services. Uh, you get uh, bring it in at about 5850. Another thing I would uh, recommend are the quick sheets. They're laminated kind of uh, overview of the Series 7. You get that for about $16 with the discount. Uh, for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on uh, Kaplan content. So here's the request. We'll help you with any question. Just easier if it's a Kaplan question because you can just send me the QID instead of cutting and pasting or doing whatever else you would have to do to send me other questions. Uh, QID 1409630, a 50,000, 20-year, 7% municipal bond with a semi-annually semi March and September coupon payments is issued on March 1st, 2020. Uh, the full uh, price for the trade of this bond with a 7% yield to maturity to settle on June 30th is closest to. Now, the big thing on the test, I haven't had anybody tell me they've had to actually do this calculation or even the number of days. I'm going to show you how to do it, but it's mainly do you know the accrued interest is paid by the buyer to the seller. So the buyer of this bond isn't going to pay 50 grand. They're going to be 50 grand and they're going to pay the owner, the previous owner, for the time frame that they actually own the bond. That part is very testable. And to know it's a 30-day month, recognition, 360 day a year, that kind of stuff is testable. In terms of actually having to do this, uh, you know, I don't think so. But uh, let's get started. Uh, I like to use a shortcut uh, for calculating the number of days of accrued interest. So if you want to use my shortcut, and the way you use the shortcut is you take a settlement. In this example, the settlement was 630. That's settlement. So where did I get that? I got that right here, right? And then I'm going to subtract uh, the last time the bond paid interest, or in this case, it's starting to pay interest. So that was 3, 1. And when I do that, I get 29 days and I get three months, right? Then you got to know that every uh, month has 30 days. Let me put that up higher so you can see a little better. So the shortcut for figuring out the number of days of accrued interest is to take settlement, 630, and subtract Last time it paid interest or that last interest starts to accrue interest for the next time frame. And when you do that, you get 29 and you get three months. And then you just got to remember that every month has 30 days. So that's 119 days. Okay, so that's the first part of this. And again, I haven't even had anybody tell me they've seen that in quite a while where you actually have to tell me it's 119 days of accrued interest. So the next step I got to figure out is I have to recognize that it has a 7% coupon and it has a yield of maturity of seven. So that means the bond is priced at par. So I know it's going to be 50,000 plus. The price for the bond is par. The way I know that is that the coupon, the nominal yield, the fixed or stated rate of return is the same as the yield of maturity or basis. So I know it's 50,000 plus something. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, and I'm going to uh, do it a little neater here, is how much is uh, this our money are we talking? So this is a 7% bond, so that 50000 times 7% means it uh, pays $3,500 in annual interest. By the way, and this one's kind of nasty too because the pars, you know, this fifty thousand dollars worth of bonds. Okay, so now I'm going to take the thirty five hundred dollars in annual interest. See how much interest per day that is. So I'm going to take the thirty five hundred, and this is testable to know that this is a three hundred and sixty day period. So I'm going to divide by three sixty to figure out what we're solving for here is interest per day. Let me get a different color. So 3,500 
divide by 360 means it pays $9.72 in interest per day. Now, by the way, being off on this wouldn't be, you know, I probably wouldn't put it on the board here. I would just continue on with my math, but it's a $9.72 in interest per day. It's actually 9.7222222, but we'll just call it there, just, you know, because it's... So that's how much we're uh, the buyer is paying the seller in interest per day. And then we're just going to take the 972 in interest per day. We're going to times by the 119 days. Uh, and 119 days times 972. 119 equals 1,156. 1,156. I, I use the 9.72222 because I have a calculator. I can give you a simple function calculator. And as I told you, I don't even think you're going to actually have to do this math. All right. So now we're almost done. A lot of work for a uh, you know, question I don't think you're going to see. But it would be that plus the price, right? That is Tesla. You're going to pay the price plus the accrued interest. So that means we're going to pay $50,000 uh, for the bonds. Uh, plus, is that in a different color? That uh, dollar amount of the accrued interest. And that gives us, uh, hopefully we'll find an answer that approximates that, which is, uh, I'm just going to use my calculator again here. And I get 51,156.94 with a bunch of repeating zeros. And so that looks like the uh, price we're going to pay. So we're hoping that when we do the reveal, that this is going to be uh, something, this answer or something close to it will be available to us. All right, so uh, let's do the reveal. Let's do the reveal. Boom, boom, boom. There we go, choice A. All right. Okay, so let's just uh, go back again. Let's just go back again and do a quick overview of the question. I don't think you're gonna have to do this question on the actual exam, uh, but you should have a general understanding that accrued interest is paid by the buyer to the seller, I did show you a nifty little shortcut about how to get the number of days. The other ways to do this is just count, literally count from, you know, March, April, you know, you can do that if you want, May, right? But I showed you a shortcut. I said, if you want to use my shortcut, you take the settlement, June 30, 630, you subtract the last uh, time it paid interest or the last interest, you know, where it starts to accrue and you get three months and 29 days, which is 119 days. And then we figured out that the bond is priced at par because the nominal yield and yield of maturity are the same. And then we figured 50,000 times 7% is 3,500 in annual interest. We then took the annual interest divided by 360. You should definitely know it's a 360 day year. We uh, figured out the bonds paid $9.72 in interest per day. The uh, seller has had them for 119 days. And therefore the seller is uh, you know entitled to 119 days of accrued interest at $9.72 a day. So they are owed $1,156.94. Remember, they say, I'll pay, pay, I'll pay you when I get it. No. And then that way, when I get the next check, I can just keep it. And we got to pay for the bonds. So the price plus the accrued interest, that is testable, just the, that number, not doing the number, but understanding that. And uh, we get 50, 51,156.94. Hope you found that helpful. Remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cent, yard by yard. Your Series 7 is hard. If you have any questions you'd like help on, just uh, send them my way. Bye-bye.